Oh, man, just minutes after I finished yesterday's show with Kyla Mills, the Warriors land a big fish. I love the free agent acquisition of Jermichael Green, and I have Alan Stiles of the Warriors flagship station, 95.7 The Game, joining me. We're going to break that down. This is a different Warriors team. The entire perspective has changed, and Dub Nation, you should be excited. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors. Your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. You can follow Alan Styles on Twitter at the underscore Styles Files. You can follow me, Cyrus Sotsas, on Twitter at Dog Surf Rocho. Alan, it's great to have you on, man. You, 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 you and whether it's Dan Devone or Shamari Block, I feel like you're like it's those three host. It's usually two of you at a time hosting at 95.7 The Game. I always love coming on your show. Thank you so much for those invites. Uh, the least I could do is repay the favor. I know this is not repaying it fully, but thanks for coming on with me. How are you doing today? And give us your first reaction to Jermichael Green, man. Yeah, it's good to be on with you, Cyrus, and, and enter your world. You're always coming into my world, so <laughs> and we we can change all the narratives the way we want to. But now I'm in I'm in your section, so I'm trying to. It's a little bit different, but I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, man. Yeah, when it comes to Jermichael Green, I think it's a huge pickup for the Warriors. I mean, I don't know how you feel but in my in what i've seen lately it just feels like everything is simply vet minimums and i'm pretty sure jamichael is not going to be on a vet minimum so anybody that's not named i'm so tired of the boogie cousins the dwight howards the blake griffins i know you wanted carmelo i think yeah, this i was might, excited but I, yeah i threw his name out there yes I, I think this might i think this might end the carmelo talk i mean they're pretty much they're very similar as far as the that wing position, which we know is kind of the hottest position when it comes to NBA and basketball right now, I think it's a huge pickup. I mean, for me, looking at Jamichael Green, he is a basically a hybrid of GP2 and Otto Porter Jr. He's not going to be either one per se, but he will do some things that both of them did. When you look at what mm -hmm. he has done from the three-point range, he's kind of that 3 and D guy, had a terrible season shooting the three ball. I believe it was 26% last season for the Nuggets. But Cyrus, that spacing was awful, just completely awful. I mean, it was Jokic in the gang, right? You got to you gotta assume that Jermichael Green's going to have way more open shots. He's going to have way more spacing. He's a career 36% three-point shooter, so we can expect to get back to those numbers playing with the best shooting backcourt to ever live. Oh, I think that's a you you uh that was a very astute observation. I 100% 100% agree with you. Um yes, the Carmelo Anthony uh speculation and it wasn't even speculation. It was just me and other people throwing his name out there. Uh that is dead. Yeah, forget him. He's I mean the, the war I cannot ex uh, uh, uh express my exuberance enough over this addition. I think he is perfect for the Golden State Warriors. I think he's exactly what they need. I think coupled with Dante DiVincenzo, uh my sour mood just is gone. Is gone. I, right? you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy now. I still do think ultimately the Warriors need one more veteran. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think at that point it's a make or break in terms of them repeating as world champions. But I would make me happier. Uh, I, I, you know, they're still considerably thin on their bench in terms of veterans, and and who knows if maybe Andre Iguodala is that guy. Uh, maybe there's someone like Lou Williams out there. I mentioned Lou Williams because he's a guest on Draymond Green's next uh, podcast, mm. and. Um, I, I, the conspiracy side of me always looks into those kinds of things. And plus I mentioned him as a wild card free agent. Cause I think he would be a great fit, especially if the Warriors right. just need that offensive punch off the bench. Um, uh, you know, Jama but the Jamaica green thing is huge. Uh, I, I want to play this soundbite first. Uh, and this soundbite is courtesy of altitude TV. And, um, this is an interview with defending two time MVP, Nikola Jokic. And he was asked uh, over a year ago, this is actually a year and a half ago, what it's like to play with Jermichael Green uh, on the Nuggets. And this was Nikola Jokic's response. Jermichael is a guy that I, I would like to play with him the rest of my life. You know, there, he, he, he's, uh, he's amazing. Uh, his effort, his energy, his uh, toughness, he kind of, when you're down, you, you, you don't want to play, you don't want to 
kind of play bad. You don't want to get you do. You don't want to be called as you didn't put effort when you when you him and with when you are with him on the court because the guy is amazing, you know. So I, all best to him. Like I don't whatever he do, he's doing aggressive. He's attacking the ball. He's shooting the ball. He he's not taking twice. You know, he's he's a when he makes when he made mistake. Like I don't have nothing to say to him because he's getting back. You know, he's he's a great player. Hey, Jamichael, um, I just asked Nicola uh, about, you know, playing with you, and he said you're a guy he wants to play with for the rest of his life. Um, how do you think you were able to build such quick chemistry with this guy? Uh, <clears throat> I think just my style of play, just the, my mental aspect of the game, just how I come in, you know, um, know my role. I'm going to try to get outside myself, and I'm going to play hard. That's my initial Jamichael introduction to you, Dub Nation. Uh, Nikola Jokic, uh, guess what? He's not going to play with you for the rest of your life. He's now a member of the Golden State Warriors. Ha ha to you. Uh, you mentioned the spacing. Uh, you're right. His numbers, when you look at his, his three-point shooting percentage, last year was a drastic dip from normal uh, career numbers of high 30%. I think once or twice in his career, he went over 40%. Mm -hmm. uh, let's touch a little more. I love what you said there, which I think is 100% correct, which is that his number dipped last year in regards to spacing. Can you elaborate on that? Like, why do you think his, his, his three-point shooting dipped? Yeah, I mean, I think it's the same thing that we we watched, right? And that might be one of the reasons that he wanted to play with the Warriors, as good as Nikola Jokic is. And obviously, they're going to get Michael Porter Jr. back. They're going to get Jamal Murray back. He's over here saying, I want to play with those guys. I mean, that looks yeah. pretty fun over there. And when you look at who else – the, the Nuggets had, I mean, the Bones Highlands of the world, who's going to be a good player. They just didn't have enough. And it makes all of the shots mean that much more. You know, when you look at Jermichael Green, he's not a guy that's going to sit there and give you 15, 20 a game. But when you have other players and, and when when you're talking about the Nuggets, he kind of needed to because it was just Jokic. Now, his role will be completely different on the Warriors. You're asking him, and this is what the Warriors do so well. We want you to do what you do well to the best of your ability. We saw it with Andrew Wiggins. We, we've seen it multiple times. So now with the spacing that he's going to have with the shooters that the Warriors have, it's a little bit more loose. It's a little bit more, I mean, GP2, look at him. GP2 was never, you know, the a marksman as far as a three-point shooter. But when you're in the corner hanging out for two, three seconds by yourself, you're pretty darn confident versus you're the Nuggets. You're trying to hang around. You see Jokic tired. You're, you're, you're leaning on a lot of these different guys. Aaron Gordon's taking threes. Anybody, anybody that they can get scoring from. So I think it's going to be less pressure on Jamichael Green. And as we know, that, that can loosen everything up and, and it flows a lot better. Oh, absolutely right, dude. I, again, I cannot it, it just express just how happy I am over this decision Kudos to Bob Myers for once again. Uh, every time doubt creeps my mind, Myers goes, F you to me. Uh, I'm smarter than you. I'm better than you. You go back in that corner and cry while I make millions as the GM of the Warriors. Uh, and rightfully so. I deserve all of that because every I question the man when certain decisions are made, and then he just comes back and just throws it right in my face. Right. Bravo, sir. Uh, in, in, in just a moment, we're going to talk more about this new addition to the team because it's obviously going to affect the depth chart. Um, it's obviously going to affect the overall outlook on the team. I think Jermichael Green just brings a totally new facet uh, to this bench, something that I think the team desperately needed, given they lost Gary Payne II, Otto Porter Jr. especially. But first, got to talk about a longtime sponsor of this program, BetOnline.net. They're the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. And I guarantee, Alan, that the Warriors the, – it, it's weird, man, because when they lost Gary Payne II – they lost uh, Otto Porter Jr. Those are really like two big losses, right? Mm -hmm. um, their 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 title odds, courtesy of Bet Online, dipped. I think the last right. time I looked at the odds, I think they were tied with the Celtics. Um, and I, something tells me with this Jermichael Green edition, those numbers going to go back up again to where they should be, and they should be the title favorites. Would you agree with that? I know the odds maker is based largely on public perception. Um, right. Do you think this boosts the Warriors' odds? I think it'll be close because the last time I checked. The Warriors were one. Then when the Celtics got Malcolm Brogdon, the Celtics became one. So does this put them back at least tied with the Celtics? Maybe, maybe not. But hey, if you're a Warriors fan, maybe you don't want them to get back to number one because maybe that 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 free cheese, that money is feeling a little bit better in that two spot because we all know and we all believe in the Warriors. 
to 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 show up regardless of what position they're in. I I'm just it's going to be funny to me, Cyrus. Just a bit of a sidebar to look at where how much the Warriors care about the regular season. We understand that you know you don't want to be the fifth seed or anything like that. But they just won the whole thing in the three seed. Now yep. for everybody saying that the Eastern Conference is so much better, the Warriors had home court. And they were the three seed. I mean, that's crazy to me. So I'm interested to see how much load management happens, for lack of a better term. Because at this point, the Warriors legitimately feel that they can win in any seed. They really do. So I don't I don't think there's going to be a lot of pushing. If, if, if a overtime game is happening in Orlando, maybe you don't play Steph 47, 48 minutes. Because just why? Why bother? Exactly. Exactly. 100% with you. We'll, we'll talk about that so much more. Uh, but again, if you want to bet on the action, you can bet on the Warriors uh, for their chances, title chances next year, and so much more. Just go to betonline.net. You can also find reviews and news of every league. Major League Baseball season's on right now. NFL starting to heat up with training camps approaching. Uh, we're in the, the, the middle of the NBA offseason. A lot of stuff still going on. Uh, and in combat sports, esports, even golf, Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting scores and podcasts they have you covered head to bet online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today bet online is where the game starts you are locked on warriors your daily golden state warriors podcast part of the locked on podcast network your team Every day. Which NFL stars move the betting line the most? Locked On gives you the 50 most valuable players in the NFL from the odds makers at Bet Online. Available now on Locked On NFL, wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. You can follow Alan Styles on Twitter at the underscore Styles Files. Uh, you can follow me, Cyrus Sauces, on Twitter at DogSurfRoadShow. I got to ask this where, the, where's the Files thing come from? Is it because it rhymes with Styles and yeah, flows. pretty much. My first Done. podcast I ever did was called Styles Files, and it's just it's kind of stuck. <laughs> love it, some I love it. Call, some people just call me Styles Files. It's pretty funny, but yeah, it's it, at first it was the Sports Files with Alan Styles. Then we just said, why don't we just do Styles Files, and the the rest is history. Respect, man. So let's look at this Warriors depth chart real quick right now, where they stand. Obviously, the starting five is Steph, Clay, and I want to talk about him in a second because I'm I'm hearing a, a lot of slander about Clay out there, which is just driving me insane. I, I cannot believe people are already uh, uh, underappreciating him, devaluing him. It is mind-boggling to me. I'd love to get your in, your opinion and insights on that. But the starting five, Curry, Clay, Wiggins, Draymond Green, Kevon Looney. Your new bench, sort of. Jordan mm -hmm. Poole is still on there right now. Dante DiVincenzo uh, joins him in the backcourt. We don't know what's going to happen with Andre Iguodala yet, but you have Jonathan Kaminga. You got Moses Moody. Um, an interesting thing about James Wiseman in terms of how the front office and the fans look at him and even the coaching staff is that he didn't play a minute last year. So you can yeah. look at Wiseman almost as a new addition to this team, which if you're another team is a frightening idea. Right. Um, and then again, now you add Jermichael uh, Green to the mix who can even play the five. I could see him easily playing a small ball five role in addition to stretch four. I do agree with you. His three point shooting is going to considerably rise again back to his averages based on the fact that he's surrounded by the greatest shooters this game has ever seen. And then you have uh, players like uh, Quindary Weatherspoon, who I think deserves a guaranteed deal. And, and speculation out, out there is that this two-way deal being offered to him right now is contingent on Andre Iguodala and whether or not Iguodala comes back. Um, you also have the rookie they picked up in the first round, Patrick Baldwin Jr., a.k.a. PB&J, who I actually think would be better suited just being tucked away for a year mm -hmm. uh, with the Santa Cruz team. They can do that legally for a year. Um, it's also a cost the team less. Uh, right. It will give them a chance to heal and develop. Um, and then I think Ryan Rollins is a player that realistically is going to have a role in this on this squad. Um, that leaves, I believe, one roster spot remaining. But that's your team. Um, how are you feeling about this so far now that we have Jermichael Green? Yeah, I think it feels great. I did want to say, though, I am interested in this whole they're going to do the buyout and he plans to sign with Golden State Warriors. I, I don't know how often this has happened. This has happened. But are we are we just rolling as if the ink has hit the paper yet? Is, is there any way that this doesn't happen? 
Technically, yes, you're right. But um, when both Wash and Shams are saying it, mm. you just got to roll with it, right? I mean, I, are, and, I, are... and I want to, I want to. Trust <laughs> me. They yeah. call me the I'm... pessimistic Warriors fan for a reason. All right, I'm trying to <laughs> trying to fight through it here, Cyrus. I'm trying to. Fight no, are, are you? It. No, I, I like this man. Let's get to know you a little bit. Are you? A, did you grow up a Warriors fan? Are you a Bay Area native? Yeah, grew up a Warriors fan. Grew up in Concord, California. Oh, nice. All that okay. Good stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I went to high school in San Ramon, man. Not that far, just down the. Oh, there you go. Man. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know Contra so. Costa well, man. Contra Costa County. So, <laughs> um, that was, okay. So yeah, I technically you're right. In theory, like Jamichael could just change his mind, but look, the Wash and Shams, they get all their information from the agents. I just mm -hmm. cannot imagine Jamichael Green's agent telling them like he's going to the Warriors and for no sure. good reason, right? I mean, and the buyout thing is nice because the Warriors are not paying that money. It's the Thunder mm -hmm. paying that money, so the Warriors just have to pay that bed minimum. And then the Thunder pay the remaining five mil of his salary and change. And then so the Warriors, it's incredible how much money they save from this man. It, it really mm -hmm. is. Um, so I hope that answers your question. I feel you on the yeah. jaded Warriors fan side just because we both grew up with the Kohan era. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's trauma, man. We, yeah, we no, but but to get back to your your question as far as the roster, I think it looks great. I don't know about you and where you stand. Joe Lacob was on Andre Iguodala's podcast and Andre Iguodala, he's a bit of a troll, for lack of a better term, when it comes to the interviews, Huge. the interviews. Yes. He, he likes to mess with reporters, things like that. And Joe Lacob's on his podcast and says, are you coming back? And then Evan Turner jokingly says, Iggy wants $28 million, <laughs> you know, and Joe Lacob says, I have to pay all these young guys. And it was funny, but I'm also curious what is the plan? Is this just a big inside joke with all of them? And is Igudala actually done, or is he gonna? Is he still trying to figure it out? And what's the timeline there? Because if if he's really, I think my thing, and I've been hard on Igudala, but I'm hard on Andre based upon how Steve Kerr plays him. If you are gonna do what Andre Igudala did last year, and all, as soon as he's ready to go. Steve Kerr throws him in the, a playoff game. I don't want that. If he's really going to be this what he was at the end of the season and be Udonis Haslam for the Warriors, then I'm okay with that. But I don't want – we can't do that and then throw him in, in in serious situations when he hasn't played. You know, he had injuries when he wasn't even playing. So yep. if he's going to be Udonis Haslam, okay with it. If he's going to, if, if Steve Kerr is, you know, saying what he normally says and we love Andre and what he brings to the table, I think I'm out on that if I'm honest. I um I 100% agree with you, man. I, I'm with you 100%. I, I Look, Andre Iguodala to me, the injuries he had last year were old man injuries. Like if I like from an outsider's perspective, yeah. if I'm, I'm looking at Andre Iguodala and I'm thinking you need to retire, man. Like you're done. You're spent. You're tapped. There's no, there's no juice left in that reserve. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it's like there's that relationship angle. I mean, life is complex, right? So you can't just look at Andre and say, hey, man, your talents are done. Or maybe your talents are there, but physically you're done. Get the hell out of here. We don't need you anymore. I mean, it's just, you know, they, they don't want to burn relationships like that. So I'm 100% with you, man. We, we've been on the same page this whole show so far. Yes, Andre Iguodala, I would love the Haslam role. I don't want him coming back telling the team I can still play because yeah. something tells me if, if he does that, he's going to break down in two seconds. And, and you just, I just don't think you can count on him anymore. You know, no. now regarding the timing thing, great points too, man. Like I, I like all, all speculation indicates that the warriors are going to have a 14 man roster. They have no need for a 15th guy, save the team money. Money is a huge factor here. Um, so I don't know if like they're going to give Andre leeway and give him that 15th spot. I don't know. That's a great question, man. These are all great questions. And I think the only two people that know or three is Lake of Myers and Andre, but right. it was funny. I heard that too, that they're joking about it. I, I was honestly impressed, dude. Let me know what you think. I was honestly impressed that Lake of even went on Iguodala's podcast because Iguodala's talked some mad, you know what, about Lake of not behind his back. I mean, he's public, yeah. but he's, he's like attacked him. So I was a little surprised that like Lake of yeah, just man. that, man. What, what hey, winning about solves that? everything. They're on their victory tour. So everything is good right now, but Iggy had came out and and talked about the them storming into the office. Remember, he's the one who talked about storming yes. into the office and you got to get rid of these young guys. And they wanted apparently it was Bradley Beal. So he owns all of it. That's one thing I will say. He does own everything he says. And he's at the point in his career, you know, he's not an old man, but he's an old man in terms of basketball. You know, your yes. your grandparents, how they just don't really care and they don't have that much of a filter. 
that's Andre Iguodala because what's the worst they can do to him? Cut him? He's going to be done anyway. So he's just kind of doing whatever he wants regardless. But looking at the rest of the roster, I think it's great. And another reason you wouldn't want to see Iguodala on the team is because I don't know if it's, again, if it's not going to take minutes away from these young guys, then fine. But if I think Steve Kerr, like a lot of different people, does he see Andre Iguodala and what he is now? Or does he still see finals MVP Andre Iguodala or get the swipe at the last game Andre Iguodala? We have Jamichael Green now. We have positions that can Mm -hmm. make up for it. So, And I want to see those minutes go to some of these young guys. And just we can even talk about Kaminga as well. These are all similar positions that they play. And if you have Andre on the team, who's to say Steve Kerr doesn't go back to the security blanket or Kaminga makes a mistake? And he gets pulled because Andre's on the bench. Those are the great things point. that I'm thinking about as well. Oh, those are great things to think about because that was a huge gripe of mine last year, man. His his Kaminga's leash is so short. Like yeah. we saw that last year. The moment Kaminga would make a mistake, he was like, you're done, you're out. And yeah. it frustrated me because sometimes teams need to stay out there, develop rhythm, develop timing, and they, and they have slow starts, but they finish yeah. strong. And, and we never even saw Kaminga get that chance occasionally. So I'm totally with you. I just I don't think Andre has it in him to do that anymore. It's it's I am curious to see how that goes. Let's talk about Kaminga and let's talk uh, because um, this next question I want to ask you I think ties in directly to Kaminga, which is that all indications are the KD trade thing is not happening. Sorry, fans, for bringing that up. This up, it'll be fast, but I think you'll like what I'm saying here. I don't think that the KD to Warriors thing is happening anytime soon, uh, if at all, for the simple reason that the Nets are just asking for the world. For a guy who's turning 34 years old, Sean Marks is delusional in these Mm -hmm. trade requests, man. It's like, I don't know what planet he's living on where he thinks he's going to get this massive package back for Durant. I think the Warriors are balking at that. They're going, what the hell do you want? Like, no. Um, So if if Marks comes back to planet Earth, maybe that trade still happens. And the reason why I think it still could happen is just because uh, based off Lacob's comments to Tim Kawakami, based off the fact money is a vitally important variable here in a lot of the personnel decisions they make, Um, A year from now, we're looking at a situation where Jordan Poole might be offered a max contract from another team that the Warriors will have to match if they want to keep Mm -hmm. him. So that's one max deal. Now you have four in your team, depending on what happens with Draymond. But he makes a lot of money, $25 million, whatever you give him, is close to a max. That's a lot of cash. Uh, But that also means Wiggins, who's an unrestricted free agent after this year, uh, will probably have to walk. And and I'm wondering if the Warriors are approaching it like this, thinking a year from now, Kaminga could take Wiggins' role on the team. Um, what, what do you see here in terms of the longer term picture, like a year from now, like, like that, and again, that's the whole reason why I think this Kevin Durant thing is more real than people want to admit is because a year from now it's one max deal versus two that you might have to pay in pool and Wiggins, your thoughts in a year from now. And if, and if you think Kaminga is that, uh, important variable that will let the Warriors just say, sorry, Andrew, we love you, but we have Kaminga. No, I think, I think it's a great point. And that again, going back to whether it's, Andre Iguodala, and you had to get Jamichael Green. You ha- this is a huge year for Jonathan Kaminga. It's huge, and it's it's yeah. kind of tough to say that because he's still so young and so new. Nineteen, in he's still nineteen. Game. He can't even go to the bar. We want to go to the bar after the podcast. He can't even go with us. He cannot even go with us. So nope. to hand the keys over to start to hand the keys over to somebody like that. This is a situation that Warriors and also Warriors fans haven't been in in a long time. You know, a lot of times we weren't even paying attention to the draft. And then when you had some of those rough seasons, you get James Wiseman, you get Kaminga, you get Moody. And, oh, all of a sudden we have young guys. Oh, no, we can't play them. They're too young. Meanwhile, all these other teams, albeit they're not as good as the Warriors, they've been playing 19, 18-year-olds Every every game, the Thunder, yeah. I mean, those guys, I don't even know if they're out of high school yet. I mean, it's ridiculous <laughs> how young that team is. Going back to Kaminga, I think something that's I don't know, I don't want to say telling. And I want to I want to kind of bounce back off with you. When we were going back and forth before the Jamichael Green signing, and maybe they were already in talks, but I'm thinking to myself, okay, very similar position to Kaminga. Is it possible? whatever you want to take from summer league. And I, and I keep telling people, well, we haven't seen this much growth. Well, when did you want him to grow? He was on the bench and they were playing in the finals. And then two weeks went by and they had summer league. When was he supposed to improve vastly compared to some of these guys who haven't played in months, right? How long the NBA playoffs is. But when you 
go back to the summer league and what you saw from Kaminga, was that a part of why they went out and got a Jermichael Green instead of a classic center? Is it, all right, maybe he's not necessarily ready for all the minutes we were going to give him, or maybe they just wanted to get out. And like you said, it's a vet minimum deal, but not really for Jermichael Green because he's getting paid from other places. It's probably a little bit of both, probably a little bit of both. But I will say, if you don't see that growth, essentially, you can't say goodbye to Andrew Wiggins if you don't see the growth you want to see by the 82nd game from Jonathan Kaminga. And now you're in a position where you're stuck. And I know that you've looked down the road and you said we might bring up Clay as well. You look down the road in that after that 2023, 2024 season, Clay is a free agent, yep. Draymond's a free agent, and Kaminga would be up for his extension. So it seems like this stuff is, you know, so far in the future, but it's really not. You really have okay. one year to figure all this stuff out. And like you said, as far as Wiggins is concerned, you don't have that year. You have one to basically take a flyer on Kaminga if you see that growth or sit there and pay Wiggins. And to your point, or do you really want to have to pick between Wiggins and Poole? Because I don't know who yeah. I pick. Yeah, yeah. And and I, I what I'm hoping for is that the CBA is revised and they re, I, I I don't I don't know if this is a pipe dream or if there's some reality to this in terms of just reducing those tax penalties for draft picks. Mm -hmm. It's absurd to penalize it, a team because you're drafting well. It's, it's, it's crazy. absurd. But and then, and then Adam Silver will get up there on draft night and say that the Warriors did it the right way <laughs> through the draft. Well, if they did it the right way, why are you penalizing them? Don't you want – what a it weird no business model to say it's to no praise them sense. and they say, but you, we want you to draft well, but if you draft too well, you got to get rid of some of your guys. What, what is that? <laughs> what you know what's really, really crazy, Alan, is that we're, we're both sitting here arguing, trying to save a billionaire money. But in this case <laughs> – no, Seriously, seriously. It, it, <laughs> it's something else, man. I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you that much. I just <laughs> – but this is a huge but, year. This is a huge year for Kaminga. Huge. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And let, let's end the note, man, on Clay because I'm hearing some slander, dude. I don't get it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I honestly thought in the last three games of the NBA, and this has been a pleasure, by the way, Alan. Thanks for coming on, man. I, of course. Uh, it, the last three, <laughs> the last three games of the NBA Finals, um, I saw the defense that was lacking since Clay came back. Man, he was mm -hmm. locking pools down, dude. He was yeah. locking Jalen Brown down. He was playing solid D on Tatum. I finally saw that that extra oomph, that extra gear that we hadn't seen defensively. Um, I see big things for him next year. I could see him putting up 23, 24. Um, even though he's gone through those injuries, that also means less mileage uh, uh, on the tires. So he might be playing 35, 40 a night. Um, and his comeback, I, unlike Draymond and Steph, who I can definitely see some minute restrictions. Right. I don't know if you're going to see that with Clay. I, I, I can see back to backs not happening, but I could see him being played a lot of minutes, man. He looks good. What are your thoughts on Clay? And um, yeah. are you buying into any of this? Like he's getting older, he's diminishing uh, BS that I'm hearing out there. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I look, I pose questions. When I'm on the radio, I pose questions. Good. Now, listeners yes. don't hear it as questions, they hear it as me having certain opinions. Okay. So, the question that I posed with Clay is he is making he's making 37, almost 38 million a year, right? So call totally it 40 now. million. Now it's 40, yeah. Now it's 40. When you look at the other players making 40 million, the, the Chris Middletons of the world, the Jimmy Butlers of the world, the question is, how does Clay stack up? Now I got fried by the call line, the text line, because how could you say this? They don't have four rings. I'm like, okay, look, I'm not saying anything. What I'm saying is it. At this point right now, I will say it is tough to put a value on clay because you want it. So I would try what I've tried to do is put a value on prime clay. Let's just okay. assume prime clay is going to come back. Now, is prime clay worth 40 million? Absolutely. I would say that 100 times out of 100 times. We're, we just have to hope that prime clay comes back. And to your point, this was supposed this coming year. It's yes. supposed to be the year because it's the second year coming off of those, you know, horrific injuries. So this is supposed to be the year where Clay shows up. Now, if he doesn't or, or or if he presses too much, people will have things to say. But as the saying goes, when facts change, opinions change. But I am yep. expecting big things from Clay. I think that what we saw from him defensively in at the end, that was vintage Clay. And everybody. Everybody gets stuck on takes and then they don't move from whatever takes. So the take was, well, he's coming back from injury. 
he's not defending the same way he was. And there were moments throughout the season where he was getting blown by. You know, I like to joke about uh, we did a bingo card as far as what you see throughout a Warriors game. We had a loony moving screen. We had Clay Thompson when he fouls looking up at the screen. And I said that <laughs> it used to be when Clay would foul and he'd look up at the screen, I'd say, oh, I believe Clay. Then it got to the point, some of those some of those fouls against the Suns, you know, in the regular season, I'm thinking, Clay, I don't know what you're looking up for, buddy. You hacked them, right? When what we <laughs> saw from Clay continuing to improve and just get his sea legs back under him, his defense against the Celtics, that was pretty darn close to vintage Clay. And it I don't was. know if we'll have we'll see that 82 games this season. Most likely we won't. But if you can see that for 70% of the season. That's, that's essentially what we probably saw before the injuries, and that's all yeah. you can ask for. And again, going back to Wiggins, it, a lot is on Kaminga. But if you get that defense back from Clay Thompson, maybe now you feel better with, with that combination of Kaminga and Clay. Maybe it's like, hey, Wiggins, thank you for everything you've done. We think that we can have this because before Wiggins, Clay was the two way guy. So if he can yep. bring that back, then it makes Wiggins, for lack of a better term, more expendable. And that bingo card makes me miss my sports radio days, man, because that's kind of fun. The jovial uh, things you do in sports radio. I love that, dude. And you can listen to Alan Styles on sports radio regularly. Do you, you don't have a consistent schedule, do you? Like, no, I can't sit here on, and say, I've been on nights very often, more often than night. You'll hear me on from 6 to 10 on 95.7 The Game. So that's where you can, you can check me out uh, doing nice. my thing with whoever I'm on with. And it's a lot of – it's all Bay Area sports. We got you. Kyle. Yep. And Dan Devone's too cool for Twitter, but I, I know Shamar. Cool. <laughs> He's got his Emmys, man. What are you going to do? He's got his Emmys. But, what, do want to, what do you want him to do? <laughs> Alan, this has been a pleasure, man. An absolute delight. I hope to have you on back soon. And again, you can follow Alan Styles on Twitter at the underscore Styles Files. And Dub Nation, I'm glad we've had a, our first show in, in a while where we're just jubile, man. This is a, this is good days because uh, Jamichael Green is that substantial of a pickup, man. He is a difference maker. Um, and I'm stoked. So, and I, it sounds like Alan, you are too. Such a pleasure, brother. Thank you. This was great, man. It's a, absolute joy. Thank you. Anything Appreciate else you want to promote before we let you go? You. Say it again. Anything else you want to promote uh, before we let you go? No, no. Just holler at me on Twitter. The quest to 1,000 is uh, it's been a bit slow, but we want to get there. So help me out, please. Help me. I'm not too proud to bet. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Fair enough, man. I, you're right. I, you're you're. I, every time I go to your Twitter account, I'm like. Why is yeah? Why is that number where it is? I'm doing it the right way, Cyrus. I don't have any bots. I don't have anything. I'm crawling, but help me, please. Yeah, follow Alan Styles. The underscore Styles Files. He is an insider, folks. He literally hosts shows on the flagship radio station of the Golden State Warriors. That's where you get all the big guests, all the inside information. And it starts with Alan Styles, man. You're right in the middle of it as a host, mind you. Um, so. Thanks. Thank you so much, dude. And tomorrow on tomorrow's show, what are we, Wednesday? Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be breaking down Dante DiVincenzo uh, with Kane Pittman, who hosts Locked on Bucks. Do you have any initial Dante DiVincenzo takes uh, before we take off? Because I'm not familiar with this guy that much, man. I've well, seen the him. Last time we, yeah, the last time we saw him and we talked before the show, I played baseball at Temple University. It's a, it, They're all a member of the Big Five Conference, and Villanova is part of the Big Five. So I can't okay. stand Villanova. But even that being said, what he did in that national championship when he had the wink heard around the world and he came off the bench, I think, and just balled out. That's where everybody was saying, who is this guy? He goes to yep. the Bucks. He just hasn't been able to find his footing. So I think, you know, we also joke about the Warriors being a bit of a last chance you for guys like that who kind of want to reframe are, your right. Head. So yes. I think that this is going to be huge for him. He He's a really good player. He could be a good player. In theory, right, he's a guy who's going to give you that threes off the bench and maybe defend a little bit, cr do some creation. So if you if they can unlock him, I think he got something. But I think if you talk to Bucks fans, he was a little bit frustrating. Sacramento fans, he's been injured, things like that. If you can get him yeah. healthy, I think it would be great. And I think he he can really help this team. I agree, man. And I need to get a Bucks guy on because he only spent like half a season with the Kings and he was injured most of the time. I, right. So I want, I want to hear from the Bucks side of it. And plus, these are the last two world champions. So uh, right. we might go at it a little bit. But Alan, man, I hope you come back on the show soon. That was an absolute pleasure. Um, always great work with you. And uh, thank you, everyone. Thanks, Alan. Take care. Thank you.